the playing field was down on uh, on it before the game. Great condition. Janikowski kicks it off, and we are underway at open. This is Todd who ran back the opening kick at Green Bay for a touchdown, and he's got a nice little return after about the 27, where he is hit by McGill. I mentioned that Buffalo game. Well, can you believe Andrew Franks kicked a field goal in the waning seconds? from over 50 yards from about 55 it looked like and it appears Miami and Buffalo are going to overtime that's key for the Colts on the wild card side and Tennessee is about to drop that game to Jacksonville which keeps the Colts still in the picture for the division the AFC South Mariota suffering an ankle injury in that game did not look good from the 26 we'll call it Frank Gore met at the line for no game Andrew Luck coming back to the Bay Area, across the Bay, of course, starred over at Stanford. He's got this streak going of touchdown passes and 21 consecutive games, had quite a season. And that protection has improved later in the year. Costanzo, the former number one pick they had back in 2011 out of Boston College. Ryan Kelly, their center, a first round pick this past year out of Alabama. And Gore, the all-time rusher in 49er history comes back this way as well. He was stuffed on the first snap. He'll try him again. Gore up the middle. Got room this time for about five or six. Perry Riley Jr. brought him down and here is the Raider defense. Mack, he might just be the NFL Defender of the Year. Bruce Irvin, he has certainly been a presence. Pass rushing seven sacks. Reggie Nelson, going back to the Pro Bowl. Seven Raiders in all. An AFC best seven going to the Pro Bowl. Edwards has come in for this third and five. And let's see his first play. Better hope it's not a hard snap count because he's excited he'll jump off sides. Luck lofts it downfield and it's just over the head of Moncrief. Good pass protection for Andrew Luck in the obvious passing situation. He wanted to throw it short. Nobody's open, so it was good man-to-man -man coverage that time by this Raiders defense. But look what he decides to do. This is what you got to worry about when you play the Colts. The deep passing game, they do it a lot, and they're one of the best in the NFL at doing it. Matt McAfee is the AFC Pro Bowl punter for the second time. He's able to get it away to Richard. Back pedals at the 16. And now weaving around. It's past a couple of Colts. Stays low and swamped at the 24. 53 yard boot. And here comes Derek Carr. Sensational touchdown to interception ratio. That's 25 touchdowns versus six interceptions. That's all. He's only been sacked 15 times this year. That's the lowest total in the league, and they've got three Pro Bowlers on that offensive line. Look at the power on the left side with Penn, Osimile, and Hudson the center. And Amari Cooper, he earned a Pro Bowl berth as well. Center, how about that? Throws it downfield and it's knocked down. He's trying to find Crabtree and he's had this dislocated pinky on his throwing hand, which has meant all shotgun since November 27th. They caught me by surprise. I was down in the field, asked if he would get under again today just to confirm it. No, didn't think he would. But one of the reasons, maybe early to start the game, trying to fool the defense with a play action pass because of two young linebackers, they're over aggressive and they're going to use some boots. Play action passes, things like that today to take advantage of a young defense. Now he goes back to the gun with Murray behind him. Low snap, but he fields it. Now, looks right, goes left. Downfield again, this time to Holmes. And it's overthrown. So a couple of deep balls to begin for the Oakland offense. Here's the Indianapolis defense of Ted Monachino. Ridgeway, the rookie, taken in the fourth round of Texas. Eric Walden, he's one of their best on the defensive side. And Vontae Davis is as well from the secondary. Green, the rookie safety, the second round pick out of Clemson. Seth Roberts comes in for third and ten on the Oakland offense. Carr. 
Able to just throw it over to Murray. Oh, what a nice move. He just jumped and cut right past T.J. Green, and that picked up the first down. Gain of 11. Yep, it's really a good job by Murray, bad job by the defense. Know the situation, and this is what really hurts this Colts defense. One, it's going to be hard to get pressure, so Carr has all day. The defense expands, but the lack of speed on the Colts defense, situations like that, guys make a miss, get extra yards, keeps the drive alive. Yeah, they love to throw it to their running backs. And it produces a first down off of third and ten. Now they go to the ground. That's Richard. And he's got a nice game until so Morrison ends it. Pick up of nine. It's now going final down in Jacksonville. And the Jacks win it. Tennessee drops to eight and seven. That's one of the things that had to happen for Indianapolis to stay alive in the division. And the big story there as well is Mariota going out in the second half with a apparent ankle injury had to be carted off the field yes Ow! And with that loss by Tennessee Houston could win the division with a win tonight going against Cincinnati oh and look at Murray met quickly by Morrison he's got some speed this kid right here rookie out of Florida yeah he uh, listen Antonio Morrison Edwin Jackson two young linebackers watch 44 here he comes reacts fast and that's what I talked about early that why they want play actions to throw over top of them to bootleg because they'll get you know sucked up inside and not have anybody out there to uh, chase down Derek Carr but excellent against the run and they need these two young linebackers to come through because they're aggressive young speedy everything you need on defense goes from second and one to third and three instead of tackle by Morrison rolling out Carr and it's dropped Crabtree had the first down for sure well, they had what they wanted. They brought Crabtree. How about that? The Raiders in this great offense. They dropped the football as much as anybody in the NFL. They bring him all the way across the formation. Confusion. Nobody is covered him, and he drops the pass. Now, these two teams actually have the most drops of yes. any two teams in the league. Pretty awesome to see. You can't believe it. You see their offense is played. It's the truth. Been a recent problem for Crabtree. There's the punt by Marquette King. It hit right on the goal line stripe and bounces in. So a net of only 38. Back here in Raiderland where the Oakland Raiders are in the postseason already and trying to lock up a division. They'll do so with two wins or a win today and a loss by Kansas City tomorrow. They could do it this week. At 11-3, heading to the postseason for the first time since 2002. Here are the Colts with their second drive. Luck airing it out. Got a man. And it is caught by Swope. An emerging tight end presence. A former basketball player at the University of Miami had his first NFL touchdown just last week. Yep, it really just a good job, a fake inside against Nate Allen and the Colts. We talked about it. They love to throw it deep down the field. And when you use your tight end on little double moves, hey, Nate Allen, safety just wasn't ready for it. That's a, that's a play that I have not seen the Colts run yet this year. Swope with a gain of 45. That's his longest here in his first season of action. They never played football. Getting better by the week. I'm telling you, impressive. And look at Gore fighting for every edge. And a gain of six. So the Colts to win the division, they needed five things to have, five games to go their way coming in. They've already got one out of the way with Tennessee losing to Jacksonville. They can control two of them, and they're two that they can't control. Houston against Cincinnati, and then Tennessee and Houston will battle next week. But there's still a chance in the wild card thing. Now, well, waiting for a result on Miami and Buffalo on that one. That's Turbin coming into the game. Smith bumps him out. Well, you can already, a couple things we've seen in this game that you got, we got to pay attention to. The Colts are going to try to stay, stay committed to the run game. Why? Because they know there's two guys on the other side, Khalil Mack and Bruce Irvin, that if you give them enough pass rushing opportunities, they will, they will win the football game for the Oakland Raiders. So, Rob Chizinski, offensive coordinator, stay with the run and keep these third down situations just like this. Third and very manageable. It is third and six. What a performance last week by the Colts at Minnesota. They put up 21 first downs in the first half alone. 
Trying to find one here on third and six. And Luck brought down at the 30. Mack got to him along with Edwards. Well, he's inside, and that's what they need. You know why they need a guy inside to make plays? Because they have two terrific outside rushers. So when the quarterback moves up, they usually don't have somebody there to take care of it. But T.Y. Hilton, he's going to come wide open. But Andrew Luck is already on the move because he felt the outside pressure. Brings out Vinatieri, 48-yard field goal attempt. The ageless wonder, 25 of 28 on the year, and it's a fake. McAfee keeps it, and he is brought down. He is hit by Darren Bates. What a recovery. Bates acted like he was going to come and be a rusher, and he pulls out. And the fact that he pulled out, it made one extra guy down the field that they could not block, and he made the tackle. And the Raiders take over on downs as McAfee is stopped on the fake. Back here in the first quarter, and all the folks in Cleveland wanted for Christmas was a Browns victory, and maybe the Cavs tomorrow. Of course, the Warriors will have something to say about that. So Cleveland gets its first win, and they're still in overtime at Buffalo as Carpenter just missed a field goal on the first possession of OT for the Bills. Here's Carp. All kinds of time, and now throws it. Roberts has it broken apart by Daryl Morris. Good piece of coverage there. Well, let's look at the fake field goal. Why didn't it work? First off, I like the call, but here's 56, Darren Bates. You think he's going to come? I thought he was going to do the old jump over the top. He fakes and pulls out, and now McAbee's like going, oh, my gosh. Nice spin move, but Nate Allen did a good job of getting out there also. And Zach Kerr, I think he'd have made the tackle also short of the first down. Okay, so Carr is 0 for 4. All of his passes to wideouts. Of course, one of them was a drop, a crab tree drop that would have gotten gotten them the first down. Three long passes by this offense here, too. So no pressure on Derek Carr so far. Carr going to the sideline and again back to Crabtree. And that was Vontae Davis who got a hand in there. NFL on CBS is now on CBS All Access. Stream your local games live. Go to CBS Sports. Just make it actually CBS. Go to CBS.com slash NFL now, and you can try it for free. Let me say this. This Indianapolis Colts defense, I thought they would come out and play safe because of the downfield throwing. Derek Carr, the pass protection, all that. They are playing man-to-man, -man and daring them to throw a deep. Derek Carr yeah. keeps trying. Look at this. There's nobody down this time for the Colts defense. Look at all the defenders standing. No one in the stands. As Carr goes down the middle. And that is, again, in the direction of Roberts. And the Raiders will punt again. Might have had him. That time he was covered by Daryl Moores. But one thing I've noticed, not going to say it's the finger, but when you don't step into the throw and really commit and drive it, it's going to go high. And Derek Carr has thrown quite a few high passes over the last couple weeks. Well, his one completion, again, to a running back, produced a first down, but the other six, 0 for 6 going to wide out so far. And Marquette King back to punt for the second time already. Wow. Bounces it around the 30 and out of bounds. Colts. Third handle of the game coming up. Hi, I'm Andrew Luck from the Indianapolis Colts, and I'd like to wish everyone a Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. And we echo those sentiments as we now get ready for the Colts. Third drive here of the opening quarter. Going against the open defense that has allowed far too many explosive plays this year. They had mistakes, switching routes, a lot of th decisions there that have caused those mistakes. There's Gore. Gallopin now, and he takes it for about 13. That's what you need. And Frank Gore, what is he? Listen, what a career he's had, a running back to take the punishment and keep on being productive, but gets in the open field and made Nate Allen miss, get those extra yards. That's what the Colts running game needs to do. Gore with a 109-yard performance in this game would have yet another 1,000-yard season. Well, he's still the workhorse for this football team, and he's got to love it. This Here offense fits him, fits Andrew Young offensive line, it's really improving. 
Which if he got the thousand, it'd be his ninth career. It'd be the oldest to do so since John Riggins back in the 80s. Here's Luck with pressure, and it is intercepted. Diving pick is made by Nate Allen. As Luck was hit when he threw it, he got hit by Malcolm Smith, had other Raiders around him. Well, we had Malcolm Smith on the blitz and Dan Williams over the center. There's 53 Malcolm Smith and you see Dan Williams just lowering the boom and that's what caused the interception. Luck trying to step up. He always does. He's very good at it. But so far today he cannot. And Nate Allen was reading the quarterback the whole way to get that interception. Good job. The Raiders the best in the NFL on turnover margin. Now go to plus 16 on the season. Allen getting all this uh, playing time here because Carl Joseph is inactive out with a toe injury. Curry. Up the cut and over to the Colts side of the field. Gain of six. By the way, we're mentioning a couple of times Marcus Mariota's injury and we just got an update that it's a fractured right fibula. Mariota carted off the field in that Titans defeat at Jacksonville. Matt Castle had to go the rest of the way. So, very difficult day for the Titans. Just brought in Feliciano, came in, number 76. Timeout, pulled by the Raiders. And we will step aside back in 30 seconds. Phil, I made an allusion to this. The Raiders, best in the league turnover margin with the pick by Allen, making it now plus 16. That's pretty good stuff. You take that, and what else? Explosive plays, they can do that. That's a remedy, a reason why they're sitting with this record at 11 and three. This is second and four here, coming out of a Raider timeout. Murray. Cuts it back to the middle, and we've got a flag thrown by the Ed Hockley led crew. Saw Big Ed before the game's looking good. Fit, of course. Never, Sun never questioned about that. Well, sunshine means what? Short sleeves. <laughs> he was pretty fired up that it was going to be warm down on the field today, so he could wear short <laughs> sleeves. I hate to call him out like that, but that's holding that's offense number seventy. Ten-yard penalty. Repeat second down. But just to go back to a little point. Here we are. The Raiders. Good field position. They had it until that penalty. Uh, you can see why the Colts, the pressure that's put on this their young offensive line, the pass rush and everything, why they got to be careful today. And it calls the turnover that pass rush by the Oakland Raiders. So the most penalized team in the league this time has the call against Kalechi Osimile, the left guard. Some say is rated the best in his position in the league. With a pass over to Richard. You know, I feel kind of embarrassed. They're all down there in short sleeves, and here and you are up yeah, there what's that in 30-pound like jackets. Because <laughs> we're smart. Uh, but this Colts defense so far being really aggressive. I, I, this has caught me by surprise. I thought they would play it safe, sit back, and be afraid of, not afraid, but, you know, to be safe against this defense. And Monikino, the defensive coordinator, and Chuck Magano, it's just not in their blood to play things safe. They're always fired up, tough. Defense has not been productive all year long, but the one thing is they play hard. Third and five for Oakland. From the 50. Standing in the pocket and finding his target. The catch made by the tight end Walford for the first down gain of 15. Well, that's a matchup they got to win. That's against TJ Green, a rookie, right across the middle. Watch 70, 88. And the coverage once again is tight, but that time, Derek Carr stepped up and then threw the football. In other words, got on top of it, kept it down where he needed it, and a nice catch. And they really are excited about Walford. They want him to get hot to help these wide receivers. Timeout called by the Colts. Timeout Indianapolis. That's their first. It's a 30-second timeout. And we'll return in 30 seconds. Tuesday on CBS, celebrate the best of the best with your favorite stars on one stage for one spectacular evening.
The Kennedy Center honors is Tuesday at 9, 8 Central, only CBS. Yes, the Eagles will be one of those honored. We'll see you Tuesday. First down, Raiders from the 34. And the handoff. This time to DeAndre Washington, the rookie out of Texas Tech. Yeah, I like him. He's got a little explosion, a little quickness. He's got it all, just what you want an NFL running back. But this is what I like, too. The Colts... They really play situations defensively very good. That time they were playing run the whole way. The linebackers were blitzing, playing aggressive, and they guessed right. You know, this football game, you know, we always thought, oh, is it really that complicated? Yes, and it is truly a chess match a lot of times between coaches. Second and seven. Walk over there by Crabtree and Walford as well, and they got a first down. Well, that's the way to get involved in the game if you're a wide receiver. Get in there and hit somebody. He gets T.J. Green, and I know they like that. When Murray runs the football, they like to see this. Well, I didn't quite get down in there. There's Crabtree getting the block, but they want him to lower his shoulder and get some tough yards And because when you play the good teams, playoff football, every yard you? counts. Who are you? Who are you? You know you. Shut the fuck up, bitch. Hey, no, no, no. Throw a lot at you, this Oakland offense. We got a third different running back on this drive. Richard is the current one. They got a flag before the snap. Mm. And pre-snap call coming against Oakland. Full start offense, number 71. Five-yard penalty hits first down. I saw Menelik Watson, the right tackle move, but I thought he was looking in at the center. And you mentioned... Watson, he steps up today as a starter at right tackle, right. inactive Austin Howard, who has been the starter there. And they've been looking at that right tackle position anyway, maybe a possible change. Yeah, Menelik Watson, just, just to give you a quick synopsis of who he is, he's a better pass blocker, so they, they like that part. But losing Austin Howard, he's, of course, you've seen Austin Howard, Jim. He's the size of a house, a good run blocker, so maybe it hurts the run game a little. But it's about protecting the quarterback at this time, so that's why they're playing middle. They clear out the backfield, first and 15. And slashing his cross, the catch is Cooper. Regain of five. Cooper has not been 100%. He's had a bunch of nagging injuries, including shoulder injuries. Made the Pro Bowl, but his numbers the last month have not been up to what they were the first two-thirds of the season. No, and they're trying to get him the ball. They want him to be involved, and you know, so much of it is just about, you're going to be nicked up, and I'm not saying, you just got to play through it and think about it a different way, and the coaching staff and Derek Carr, they can help him. I thought watching him warm up today, I said to you, man, he is flying around the field, so confidence is a, a big deal with young players. Second and ten. And they find Crabtree with the position in front of Vontae Davis. And they'll have third and about three coming up. Well, you know, you take these wide receivers, you talk about this offense, they throw it deep well, they have dropped a lot of passes, which you have said, but they can do so many things on the offensive side. And good example there, Colts drop back and play it safe. Well, he can dink and dunk it right down the field on your Derek Carr with these receivers. He's got five different pass catchers so far in this game. He's got five completions, five different receivers, third and four. Looking his way the whole time, and he's got Crabtree tiptoeing down the sideline and out of bounds near the two. Well, it's all about winning at the line of scrimmage. 15, watch him. Little shake inside. Oh my gosh! Don't wonder Vontae Davis was fooled. And I've seen that a lot this year. And people around the league are starting to copy some of these moves and you know, hit steps or whatever that Crabtree and Cooper run. And you saw one there that was different, and it worked very well against Davis. Murray lined up in the eye. He's had seven rush touchdowns at home. It's the handle, and there's big contact on him. And they plug it up for no game. Now this indie defense, maybe they lack a little speed by NFL standards, but I'll tell you this, they don't lack size inside. There's Zach Kerr, Henry Anderson back from being injured. Boy, they need him to come through. T.Y. McGill's. So, tough to just run right at him, right up the middle. 
Now they'll spread it out. Hey. The Raiders will. Murray is going to return to the backfield. Trying to see if it's man or zone. It's man. Second and goal. Toss to the end zone. And it is. Oh, he didn't handle it all the way to the ground. That was Roberts. It looked like he had a touchdown. Oh. Morris helped break it apart. What a play by Daryl Morris. Here he is. Little inside fade. He beats him, but he times it right and puts his hand between Seth Roberts' arm and just rips his right arm down. This Daryl Morris caught my attention. He's made a couple of plays already today, too. Today, and I'll tell you these last couple games when you watch him. And so you, I look at this Colts team, and I just see a team. They might not make the playoffs or whatever, but, boy, they got a lot of players, I think, that they're building on, and it looks good for the future. It is third and goal. Final seconds of the first quarter. Carr on the run, fires, and incomplete. And a flag comes out on Davis. Contact in the end zone. It's a good call. It's a good call. It was another little fake step inside. Kind of a unique play. Pass interference, defense, number 21. The ball is placed into a one-yard line. First down. Bottom of your screen. Watch it. They keep fighting. There's a little hole, but it's a put. Well, what did he tell us tough. last night, Davis? He had a lot of experience with Crabtree. They came out of the same yeah. draft class, <laughs> and Crabtree used to be a teammate of his brother Vernon That's right. over with the 49ers. So he's worked yeah. out with him, knew him well. And Crabtree likes to talk a little during the game. And Vonte, we've met him. We've met him many times over the years. Quiet guy. Yep. Kind of a tough break there. You know, you got to call it both ways. Crabtree got away with a push off. off push off also. First and goal. End zone bound and incomplete and another flag as Melvin was trying to go one-on-one -on -one with Andre Holmes. Pass interference, defense, number 30 in the end zone. Half the misses to the goal. Automatic first down. Well, top of the screen, Sean Melvin gets Holmes, and it's contact the whole time. If he never moved, it was going to be okay because the throw was so low that Holmes would have never got over the top to make the catch. This is really a little bit of the product of the shotgun, you know, where you are getting the, under the center and run the ball in. So first down from a foot away. Three seconds to go in the quarter. Murray. Oh, he's pushed back by Morrison. Yes. Murray left his feet. He thought he was going to soar to the end zone, and Morrison met him. It's just what I thought. He's so deep, they can read it. They can get there before he can because he's not under the center of the quarterback. Scoreless after one. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by... Southwest, yes to low fares, but nothing to hide. That's transparency. The 2017 Kia Sorento. Learn more at Kia.com. Haynes with fresh IQ advanced odor protection technology. And by Bud Light, strike gold, and you can win Super Bowl tickets for life. Well, the Dolphins have won that game in overtime with seconds to go. A short field goal won it. The cardiac golf. No kidding. That eliminates the Bills, and Indy no longer can get in as a wild card. Still in as a possibility in the AFC South. Second and goal. Raiders to start the second quarter, and under center under. now is Carr. There you go. Blue ID! What's up? Gonna throw it to Holmes. What a catch. Oh, he did hold on. Holmes with a touchdown grab. Well, they went under center. I'm not sure if it wasn't a run, and he just had the option to throw it. The one thing Derek Carr says, he has full control to change plays. Oh, he catches the football. Good job by Holmes. And if you want to get rid of the football quick on a play like this, being under center is the way to do it. He beat Rashawn Melvin for the touchdown. It's the 26th touchdown pass for Derek Carr this season. They were determined to get a, touch, uh, a touchdown pass in the drive, weren't they? They really were. Man. Janikowski, who is a perfect 34 for 34 this year, knocks that one through. 
There's Nate Allen who had an interception there in the first quarter. And now Luck and the Colts find themselves seven down. We can update the AFC playoff picture. That Miami win was hurtful to Denver. It doesn't eliminate them, but it certainly takes out some of their possibilities. And Miami will get in if Kansas City beats Denver tomorrow night. The Dolphins would get a wild card berth. Also didn't help Baltimore, too, on the wild card side of things. But, of course, Baltimore and Pittsburgh are still battling for that AFC North Division title. Oakland and that AFC West and it is still up for grabs. And so, too, the number one seed has not been clinched yet, although Miami, uh, although New England today blew out the Jets and they still have the upper hand. They've, they've already clinched a first round bye, have the Pats and their division. But if Oakland wins here today, and then the Patriots would need to win next week. They got to keep playing. Miami. That's, That's right. right. Of course, a lot of reasons why the Raiders want to win. We know that, hey, one, to win the football game, keep the playoff position where it is, and they want that bye week. Yes. Give their quarterback to give him an extra week. To let that pinky finger heal. Jim Kowski earning a touchback. With this one, this is one of the things about having the, the the second set of games is there's a lot of action finishing and a, a lot to try to extrapolate out of all these results. But if you're Indianapolis, you came into today thinking we may take the field and our season is in essence over. But that's not the case with the Tennessee loss. Right, they're still in it. Hey, all I can say, extrapolating whatever you're doing over, you keep doing it because I want nothing to do with <laughs> figuring out the playoffs. Let me just talk about what's going on in this field and. It is. It's called, right. it's called multitasking, my hey, friend. Hey, you're great at it. It's good. And you're right. Keep people updated because everybody wants to know, is our team going to make the playoffs? Well, here come the Colts with a handoff to Gore. He's ripped off some nice runs. That's his fifth carry now in the game yep. for 31 yards. Mario Edwards in there in the tackle, and they're going to stay with that run game. And I think it's quite evident in the short period of this game why they're doing it, and we've seen it. What do you think, Edwards, once he gets healthy, let's say he gets 20, 25 snaps, what can he bring to this defense? Well, let me see if I could really get it quickly. He can change their defense. He can change their team. They like inside pressure. He can get it for them. You know, they can pressure the outside. Now, if he becomes a force inside, you can't double-team Khalil Mack and Bruce Irvin and all these formations and it just makes them – more dynamic and dangerous. After Gore looked like he picked up the first down, a flag was out as uh, Bruce Irvin and Dwayne Allen were scuffling there for a moment. The result of the play was a first down. Fouls by both teams, personal foul. Number 83 and number 51. Those penalties offset. As I said, the result of the play is a first down. So Irvin and Allen flag offsetting. It isn't going to be a first down for the Colts. And yeah. Oh, yeah. Let me get one more extra shot in there. This is Dwayne Allen and two good players. That's okay. There's a lot of pushing and shoving. I think he's trying to illustrate to Ed Hockley <laughs> that this is what he did. He hit me right up this yeah. way. I'll tell you, listen, Bruce Servin, we talked to him on Friday, no, Thursday, because today's Saturday, but he is really just getting better week by week, and what a pair along with Khalil Mack they make. First down for the Colts. Wide open is Doyle, and look at Jack Doyle take it to the Oakland side of the field. Gain of 17. Doyle having quite a season. His 53rd reception of the year. Yeah, Doyle comes across the field. Everybody's looking at T.Y. Hilton and chasing, so nobody in the middle of the field. And one thing I like about this offense, Rob Chesinski, the offensive coordinator. Let's see, Jim, what did he play in college? He was a tight end. Oh. I believe he wore number 84 down at Miami. That's right. His games back in the 80s. Well, you know what that means. He's got a lot of plays yeah. designed for the tight end, and they have three of them, and I think it's a really good group. Oh, no. uh, that they have. They complement each other, and they're all threat to catch the ball. Sidestep move by Gore to 
half jump over a defender and gain three. Ellis and Allen combined to bring him down. New Year's Day on CBS when someone is kidnapped. This is the team that brings them back alive. Catch the series premiere of the new thriller, Ransom, Sunday, January 1st, after 60 minutes on America's number one network. Now, one of the reserves came in, James Calzer at 47. He comes in and spells Khalil Mack for a few plays and takes over for Bruce Irvin a few plays. Second and seven, and now it's Turbin. Boy, this is, I tell you, I, I'm going back as I watch these runs. Chuck Pagano, we, of course, we first seen, one of the first things we asked him, how about the offensive starting line? What are we going to do? Because they got so many different guys. He goes, we're going to stay with the ones that played last week. I'm playing, I'm playing the guys that are tough. Or, you know, just, he was fired up because he loved the way their offensive line played last week in Minnesota against a very good defensive front. They showed a lot of toughness. They fought hard doing that here today. Three rookies on that defense. Offensive line. There is a third and a foot picked up by Turbin. Yeah, that offensive line has been under great scrutiny because people would say, when are they going to invest in protecting Andrew Luck, who got knocked down and sacked 31 times through the first eight games of yep. the year, but only nine times the last six. So it seems to be gelling a little bit. Right. It, it definitely is. Joe Philbin, the offensive line coach, he's coached the Miami Dolphins. You got that. You got the right coordinator. And these young offensive line linemen are growing up. And, you know, I'm not going to look into the future, but I can look at them, and my guess is they're going to have an outstanding offensive line for years to come. There's the first down. Perry Gordon looking him break outside, and then get tackled from behind by Nate Allen. Good block by one of those rookie linemen, LaRaven Clark, and it yep. helps bring him for eight. LaRaven Clark, the right tackle. He really stayed after this guy's watch 62 at the end. Stays with the block. Oh, takes his man down, and he kind of did that last week. Just his tenacity. And Chuck Pagano says he doesn't say a word. You know, he's as quiet as can be. When he puts that helmet on, he turns into a different guy. And, and it's just, like you said, three rookie offensive linemen. The left guard, Harrison, he's in his third year. Second and two. To Doyle. That's enough for the first. Mack, who did not. Did not see action the first five plays of this drive has come back out now. Taking back over for Kowser. Yeah, they give him a break. When you're a pass rusher like Khalil Mack and Bruce Irvin, you need a couple series or at least one each half where you can, you know, catch your breath and keep attacking the quarterback if the opportunity arises. Defensive coordinator Ken Norton Jr. He needs to call. That defense he called late in the game last week against San Diego, the Ali. Ali. There you go. First down for the 24. And luck. In zone bound wide open. It's Moncrief with the touchdown. Twenty-four yard connection from Andrew Luck to Dante Moncrief. Well, it looks like they might have faked a screen to the outside. And Don, Don Tay Moncrief goes down the sideline here. Oh, it is a fake screen. So they all bite on the screen underneath. So quick look. Actually was right. And then Moncrief, everybody attacks the screen. He goes uncovered down the field. Really good call. Moncrief, who was out last week with a hamstring and missed five games earlier in the year with a fractured scapula. He has a, quite a knack for scoring touchdowns in the limited number of games he's been able to play this year. Well, he makes the perfect complement to Dorsett and T.Y. Hilton. Mm. I mean, and then you take the tight ends, and because he's that big guy who can run, you know. Let's see when you want a basketball team at wide receivers. Well, Chuck Pagano, he might. He could accept yeah. the penalty. Yeah, and go and, for two. And, and go for two and not have very much ground to cover. Encroachment by the defense. A five-yard penalty will be enforced on the kickoff at the election of Indianapolis. Okay. Instead, they'll go ahead and try to just get the single point from Vinatieri, who, like Janikowski, has not missed a PAT this year in 39 tries. Impressive drive, wasn't it, by the Colts? Had a little bit of everything. The biggest thing was the power and the determination of the offensive line. Good 
job of getting it down by McAfee, and the game is tied. Well, they ran hard that series, and Luck was three for three on that series, including the strike to Moncrief. That's now 22 consecutive games with a touchdown pass by Andrew Luck, his 28th of the year. He did not make the Pro Bowl, by the way. The three AFC quarterbacks being Carr and Brady and Roethlisberger. That's a shame. Here's Richard, and he is brought down from behind. Todman on the tackle. 7-7 at the second. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Honda. Hurry in for great deals during Happy Honda Days. Domino's order online at dominoes.com. Amazon Prime get free two-day shipping on millions of items. And by Verizon, it's always a great gift on Verizon. What's the gift you're hoping to get tomorrow when you get back home to Franklin Lakes, New Jersey? Oh, that's a good question. Well, I'm, you know, look, Santa Claus doesn't get gifts. So I'm Santa Claus. I got you. Know, you. you know what I'm saying? I got that same role. You got the same role? I, I hear you. <laughs> oh, and, and Lance Barrow says you got to be good to get gifts. I don't know what he means by that. That means he's getting none. Look at producer. <laughs> well, let's watch this touchdown and watch what happens. T.Y. Hilton in the, out, in the slot there comes up the field and he raises his hands. He knows right away by the coverage that Dante Moncrief is going to be wide open for the touchdown. He's a predictor. That was talked to T.Y. last night. He's the leader of that wide receiver group and learned from Reggie Wayne who taught him well. He's doing a good job of teaching these young guys what to do. That is for uh, Moncrief, by the way, seven touchdowns. And 29 catches on the year. He's got more touchdown grabs than T.Y. does now. Well, you talk about this Oakland. Washington carries it there for a short game. Yeah. Previous play, a tremendous play by Antonio Morrison on the tackle. Yeah, he, we got to talk about him. But, hey, this offensive line of the Raiders, it's the key to this team. Look at the separation between the defenders and Derek Carr. And watch this run. Well, similarly, the left guard. Clears this running lane. Awesome. They protect. They do a lot of different things. They make it easy for Derek Carr. He faces third and eight. Lofts it, and what a catch by Crabtree. In stride. He dropped it right in the basket. As Morris was airtight on the coverage, but the pass was perfect. Gain of 35. Well, if you're going to get up there and bump and run them, they're going to do this. The inside guy is going to release out. That's Crabtree. Why? Because he has so much room, and that was truly drop it in the bucket throw. High, came straight down. Perfect throw. Park on first down, being chased. Finds Richard, but he is met right away by Mike Adams. Carr has hit eight of his last nine passes, but that one for no gain. Well, he Finally got a little pressure, got him out of the pocket. But you can't chase him down. I'll tell you, Derek Carr, he made something. He made a big run last week to help him win the game against the San Diego Chargers. Very mobile. But you got to make him run. He'll stand in that pocket and read it until you force him to move. When he does, he's a threat. Second and ten. And he's into the secondary. Rodney Hudson, Seth Roberts, just a couple of the Raiders who helped free him for 12. Well, you got Hudson, the center, pulling out. That's pretty cool when the center pulls out 61. Look at that hit on Morrison. And Richard, he's quick, he's fast. Go Chief. Free agent who had to go through a tryout camp just to get to the training camp roster. Has a good role in this offense. First down carry again. Oh, look at him go. Breaks off that low hit and has another big gainer again. Hudson with a beautiful block. Well, if it works, why you know I never understand that. If it works, do it again. 161. Bam. I mean, he's just such a good athlete, Hudson. I can't understand why offensive coordinators don't repeat plays in the NFL when they work. Darius Butler shaken up on that play, so we'll step aside. Butler got banged up on that play in the shoulder area. Former second round pick by the Patriots who's come on this season in the nickel for the Colts. First down Raiders in the red zone. 
Rashard again. He read the defense, Derek Carr. This is the control he has of the offense and said, well, we've run two left. Let's turn it around and go to the right. Little outside zone. So the offensive line's all moving to the right. And Richard, boy, just, he is quick. You can tell the difference when he's in the game, his style of running. Right, here we go. Four carries, 45 yards, big chunks on this series alone. Go, Three different Lions, occasions. Lions, Lions. They got a big offensive line, the Raiders, and what really separates them, they got three, four guys that are really mobile, so one game is unlimited. Second one from the five, and completes it, and Walford takes it home for the touchdown. Broke away from T.J. Green, and Carr has his second touchdown toss of this first half. Well, really good job of just selling it. He gets out there, and he knows where it's at. He just... Quick stop, T.J. Green misses the tackle. Got to extend your arms to make, make the tackle. A lot of ways to get in the end zone for this offense once they get down inside that 20 and 10 yard line. Chuck Pagano is trying to tell him. Wrap him up. And what were you saying about the Colts and tackling? It's one of the worse than the league. It's not good. Janikowski for the first time this season and only the fifth time in his 17-year career he misses an extra point. That drive ends with a touchdown pass from Carr. Well, you're playing the role of Santa. That's what Derek Carr did last night. He brought all the family in. Yes. He's got a couple of young boys. His wife made dinner, had the in-laws. He had his brother David and his family there. Had them all there. And, and his a lot gift, of kids. His gift. He gave them all the sweet to this game. And for the first time in the NFL, David Carr's watching his younger brother play in yeah. person. Got to be proud. I, well, I would be proud if I had a brother that was doing what Derek Carr is doing. Of course, David Carr, look, he was the first pick of the draft himself. That's a pretty unbelievable accomplishment by that family. What his brother would have given to have the kind of protection that Derek's getting these days, oh. you know? Well, what did Derek? I'm gonna be Derek said, "I cherish it. I love it. Yeah. I don't take it for granted," because he was a young kid watching his brother down in Houston get dismantled week after week. Yeah, he said, "I grew up watching the worst pass protection ever." And again, the Raiders have allowed the fewest sacks this year. So, Carr and this offense so good in so many ways. It's Gore. Stacked up, gain of two. You know, a lot of people don't realize, because you know the family's from Bakersfield, and the whole Fresno State connection, but the family moved to Houston to be there when David was playing, so Derek, through his junior year, played high school football down there. And Andrew Luck's last high school football game was matched up against Derek's Clements High School in the state playoffs, and the car team won. Clements High School won. Yeah. Yeah, I think they had a good laugh about that on the field before the game today. They were talking, and I think it was about that high school game. And now both of those quarterbacks would like to find a way to return to Houston in a month time to Super Bowl 51 if they can. And that's Doyle with his third catch. This one goes for six. Good pass protection at time with this young offensive line. And what they need today, and they've got Khalil Mack almost gets there. But they need, and so far it's worked, Anthony Costanzo, number 74, the left tackle. Hey, he's their best lineman. So they want to leave him one-on-one -on -one as much as they can and let the other guys help each other out. That means Anthony Costanzo, Costanzo could be against Mack or Irvin because they switch sides. Look at the black hole behind Luck on third and two. Protected to Doyle. And another first down out at the 40. Malcolm Smith wraps hold of a game seven. Yeah, you know, respect the opponent you're playing, and that's what the Colts are doing. Doyle, number 84, just a little push off on the inside against Smith. A little stick route, they call it. Everybody in the NFL runs it in situations like that. But what I mean by respect your opponent, they're respecting this outside pass rush. They don't want it to ruin the game, so they're running the football, and you don't see the usual deep passes or so many of them which we see from the Colts week to week. Got to pick your time in the right moment to throw it deep. Luck has six completions, four of them to Doyle. 
And he's going to throw again here. Had to get rid of it as the pocket was collapsing and Riley on the coverage of Gore incomplete. Mack was starting to break down that protection from the edge. Well, Khalil Mack on the other side is Bruce Irvin. They chip him, and it's not, boy, you chip him, and you put a tight end on Khalil Mack. That is one pass protection that I do not like. And I wouldn't like if I was a quarterback. And how many times have I said it, Jim? Pass rushers against tight ends, it's not going to work. Mack with the most sacks in the league since the start of last season. Here's a second and ten handoff to Gore. Slips through a tackle and he's within a foot of a first. Boy, Gore's got some light feet today. Hasn't he, though? Man. At 33, he's still got that burst. That's amazing. It really is. I mean, he's kept his weight. He's trim, in shape, and a little gimpy coming to the sideline here. Stenzel gets a good block, but just slipping those tackles inside. Look how much extra yards he picks up. And once again, the Colts in a very favorable third down situation. Gore with 56 yards on 10 attempts. Replaced by Turbin on third and a foot. <laughs> Turbin, who has developed into a nice uh, backup uh, to Gore. Absolutely. Journeyman there for a couple years. Bounced around from Seattle to Cleveland to Dallas and well, a lot of people disenchanted, and he's found a home here in Indianapolis and made contributions. Well, some, you know, all positions, running backs, quarterbacks, wide receivers, you got to find the system for you. This is this is one that fits Turbin. It's not a lot of razzle-dazzle in the run game. It's about running with power and determination, and he's doing it. The Colts overall 67 on the ground. And a new set of downs as we approach the two-minute mark. There's Turbin. Nice little cut there. And steps into the linebacking crew. Little jump Gain cut. of six. Yeah, seen a couple of those today. Yeah. And we reach the two-minute warning here in Oakland. With the Raiders leading at 13-7. to seven. You're watching the NFL on CBS. Chuck Pagano, who was the Raiders defensive back coach back in 2005 and 6. His Colts with a second and four coming out of the two-minute Warning, Gore has returned after missing two plays. Fake to him. And they find Hilton. That's the first target of the game to T.Y. Hilton. Well, you know what it is. This offensive line's been blocking for the run. They're running it, and all of a sudden, all the Raiders are near the line of scrimmage. And look at the space underneath for T.Y. Hilton. And you've got to give him room, Jim, because of his speed and all the deep passes he's caught this year. It's a 12-yard game. The Raiders have given up only 15 points in the last two minutes of the first half this year. And they've given up no points in the last two minutes of the fourth quarter. Now, Luck gets uh, hit, got rid of it. That was Mack. It's going to be. It's going to be intentional grounding. Yeah, they're looking at it. Where did the ball land? Did it get past the line of scrimmage? It was short. Let's we'll see if they give him a break, but I thought it was short, and he was definitely in the pocket. There was no intentional grounding. Number 83 was in the vicinity. Second down. Okay. So they okay. say Dwayne Allen was close enough. So he was in the stadium. Well, Jack Del Rio doesn't agree. This is when Mack, you get late-game situations. How many times this year has he been the difference maker? Well, he went around Joe Haig. Little game really quick. That's what's amazing. Powerful guy. Can play the run. And so... It, I, you call him a bender. Anytime you see a great pass rusher, they can really bend to get it done. Tenth play of this drive. From the 29, second and ten. There's Mack again, giving chase. Luck airs it out. And in the end zone, it is intercepted by Reggie Nelson. He was back. Defending on T.Y. Hilton. Mack goes inside, gets the pressure, frees up Bruce Irvin, causes the interception. Coming up, the Verizon Halftime Report. J.B., Tony, Bart, Boomer, Coach Cower. They're all there for the latest scores and highlights and a recap of the 1 o'clock Eastern games on the Verizon Halftime Report. Santa and his elves. There we are in the studio. Mm -hmm. Some big elves, though, you know. They're getting bigger these days. 
carry a lot of packages with him and then rooftop to rooftop. <laughs> First and ten. Give to Richard. Look at that cutback. Oh. Unbelievable. Look at Richard try to kick it in gear. And he is putting on a show here in the first half. That goes for 19. That's what you do. Richard just great job. Nothing there. Stops, reverses his field. But what's so cool, look at all the linemen. Middle like Watson, Gabe Jackson out in front leading the way. Zach Kerr is shaken up. What happened on the well interception by Nelson? Raiders get the ball back because of what? Watch Khalil Mack, 52. He forces Luck to move, and then look who cleans it up. There's Bruce serving with the big hit. Boy, you talk about uh, trying to nickname these two Batman and Robin. I don't know if Bruce Irvin really has sold on him being Robin. <laughs> no, he didn't but, like that. No. Hey, hey, we got two Batmans. I don't care what you want to call right. them. They are good. And it's amazing how they work together. We asked Bruce Irvin. He says, I just look across the line and give a nod to Khalil, and they know what it means. Like, I'll go high, you go low. It's like one chases the person out, and the other one's sitting there waiting on it. I'd like to see who is going to beat, if anyone is, Mac out for the Defensive Player of the Year. The list, he would be first on my list, mm -hmm. and he would be second on my list. And let me keep thinking. Look, I think it is in there. I think he's a shoe in for it. And I've thought about a lot of defensive players. Nobody's had the year he's had. His car, the crab tree, and wrapped up around the neck area by Edwin Jackson. And a timeout by the Raiders and we'll be right back in 30 seconds. The Verizon Halftime Report is coming up. Scores and highlights, the latest playoff scenarios as Buffalo, Carolina, New Orleans, Minnesota all eliminated today by the early results. Second and five. And Clark looking and heaving to Cooper for a big one. Uh, they take a chance. The Colts come on the blitz. And I, I don't know, it's tough to blitz this team because here's what happens. What a route by Cooper. He just outruns Melvin. And it was a beautiful, perfect throw by Derek Carr over the top. That's why you like tall receivers with long arms because they can reach up when they're covered and make those catches. That one goes for 34 yards to Cooper. Now how about that throw, Jim Lance? That's two we've seen where he just puts it on the money, turns it over. Beautiful. The other one to Swope, the one for 45. Here's a first down throw across the middle. He's got Washington and the rookie at the 10 and down to the 5. Seth Roberts down there again throwing a nice block. He's done that a couple of times. It's a 17-yard gain for the Raiders. Timeout called by the Raiders. And look at Carr over his last 10 attempts. We've got a possible two touchdown swing here in the last two minutes of this half, Phil, with that end zone interception by Nelson, who leads the league in picks since the beginning of 2014. And now Carr is on a roll, hitting 12 of his last 13 throws, a couple of them going for touchdowns. Well, it's been impressive, the Raiders, the offensive line. We, you know, can't say enough about what they're doing. But Derek Carr, I know he's getting tremendous protection. And he is making some great throws. It is a first and goal situation. And what do you do on defense? You have no idea what's coming. Raiders with no timeouts. It's Carr has crossed the middle of the feet. That was in the area of Cooper. A little rushed at time. Looked like they weren't, you know, Cooper kind of stopped and Derek Carr let him across the middle. You could see the frustration from Carr about the miscommunication. Well, they had one last week against the San Diego Chargers. Could have cost them the game. Here he comes across the middle and he just, oh, let me stop. Oh, if he keeps running, it's, it might be a touchdown. They throw an interception because of miscommunication or really an error by the receiver last week against San Diego. Now on second and goal. Swings it over to Richard and he is able to break into the end zone for an Oakland touchdown. Outside screen, that's what they did. Wide receivers were blocking the whole time, and they let Richard get out there. And, Jim, you've said it a few times. These wide receivers for Oakland 
Yeah, they're going to get graded high for their blocking today. Watch Cooper, Roberts both get their guys. Boy, if he doesn't break off that tackle, if somehow they had stopped him at the one. They had no timeouts left. Now, they would have had time, you think, to have done something, but it would yes. have been a panic. It would have been frenetic for sure. Three touchdowns by Carr to three different receivers. One a running back, one a receiver, and one a tight end. Extra point. Oh. oh, it hits the right upright. So it was deflected, I believe, at the line. So Janikowski hits his first 35 of the season and now misses his last two. Yeah, it looked like it was tipped. Who gets it? No. Yeah, I think it did. I think it just grazed the yeah. edge of the hand. Ridgeway, oh, Ridgeway holding his arm up. Usually the guy that tips it celebrates the most. Hassan Ridgeway. I'll tell you, that's one of the all-time great audio effects yeah. right there. Sounds like one of my shots yeah. in basketball. Ed Soltis doing it up. We've got that uh, goalpost mic'd by Janikowski. We did have it mic'd. It's gone now. Yeah, that shot. yeah that's right. It's gone. I just sounded like it hit it square on. But set up by the Nelson interception. Yep. And great then they go 80 yards in six plays. The second time they've scored a touchdown off takeaways. And the pass rush became the problem. Calls the interception. Janikowski became a father for the third time this week. With the arrival of a little girl. On Monday, Jordan with his twin girls as well. Going to be a special Christmas, even with the missed PATs. All right, here's the run back by Ferguson. Just across the 20. Earlier this week, the Raiders receivers switched roles and became givers, presenting 50 bikes to boys and girls from the Davis Street Family Resource Center just outside Oakland. Michael Crabtree, Amari Cooper, Andre Holmes, Johnny Holton, KJ Brent from the team was there. Awesome. Boy, a lot of guys and all the NFL teams did a great have done a great job in the holiday season. Giving back. Colts will just take a knee and remember the Raiders deferred, so they'll be getting the third quarter kick with the 19-7 lead at the intermission. This Raider team, they got a lot of game changers, don't they? Mm. At the right positions. Hitting the quarterback, protecting the quarterback, the quarterback himself. Offensive coordinator Bill Musgrave really taking advantage of the fact that he has a tremendous offensive line and shows them all. Boy, has Reggie McKenzie hit on a lot of draft picks and free agents. Let's go down to Tracy. Thanks, Jim. Coach, you're able to take advantage of the interception. What can you say about your offense just getting everyone involved so far today? Yeah, I think that's exactly what Derek does. He does a great job distributing the ball. It doesn't really matter. If you get open, he's going to get it to you. You're bringing the pressure on Andrew Luck, but you know you can never count him and the Colts out. So what do you need to see from your defense in the second half? Well, we just want to play a little cleaner in the second half. I mean, really, it, it, as good as it is to be up a couple scores, we know that it wasn't as clean as we need to be. We're going to work hard to clean that up at halftime. Thanks a lot. And again, the Colts must win or they'll be eliminated from playoff consideration. Raiders trying to keep on moving toward a AFC West title. They can't clinch it here this afternoon, but they can stay in front. 19-7 at halftime. The Verizon Halftime Report coming up. And the Raiders about to receive the kick to begin the second half. McAfee will be handling the kickoff. And you can follow your favorite team all season long. Go to iTunes.com slash NFL. 13 points off takeaways for the Raiders. And the last two minutes in that sequence with the Colts driving to try to go in, score a touchdown, kick the PAT for the possible lead, but the interception instead. Raiders racing down the field the other way. That's all the difference here. And that kick comes to the goal line. Richard has it. He's been the X factor here today. He plows ahead to about the 23. He is uh, 
a player as you look at it now. You talk about how dynamic this team can be in so many different ways they can beat you. That's, that's just another, another one. Another one right there. You can never have enough weapons, right? You got you got to have a lot in the arsenal, and they got it. And hey, the first half the Colts were valiant. They fought hard, but it's two things that come to mind: the Raiders' offensive line, and you got to block. Khalil Mack and Bruce Irvin, can you do it the whole game? And the answer is probably not. We'll see what Carr and company can do here in quarter number three. And 11-3 and three on the year. And playoff bound for the first time since 2002. Trying to make the best possible playoff seed for them. As they hand it off to Murray. And he comes out of a jam and picks up a couple of yards. Let's... Get the word from the Colts locker room in there in halftime. What did you hear, Tracy? Well, Chuck Pagano said it's the pass rush. They need to get more pressure on Derek Carr, and they need to tackle better. And then on the other side of the ball, eliminate mistakes, the interceptions, the penalties. He said that cannot happen. He said it's not going to happen what, with one swing of the bat. He said it's the old cliche, one play at a time. Jim? Now, when we were watching the Colts play at Green Bay a month ago as they run it again with Murray for no gain. Pagano's big mantra then was first five, last five. First five minutes, last five minutes yep. of each half. Well, we saw what happened in the last five minutes of the first half here today. Not good. And, you know, Tracy, that report that you just gave, a lot of people give that report after halftime about the Raiders. You know, we've got to get more pressure on the quarterback. It's, hey, it's a great thought. How do you do it when this line is – as good as it is. One of the best in the NFL, no question. Third and seven. And he's got all kinds of time and protection. And he's got a first down catch made by Crabtree in front of Morris. Gain of 11. It, it, it just in this day and age where so many football teams have tremendous problems with their offensive line. Man, it's a nice route by Crabtree. He did it not with movement, just to the head fake to the inside. But look at the protection. Nobody in front of Derek Carr and just that's as easy as it gets. And it's the third time that the Raiders have converted on third down with a completion to Crabtree, who has five receptions, 72 yards. DeAndre Washington breaks it for about nine. Vidal Alexander that time. There's another name to add to that offensive line. He came in and made a big block. That's what I like, the fact that they have all these multiple ways to do it. They bring in the different I offensive mean, linemen. Alexander, they get the blocks to the outside. Look at 74, seals it. And Eric Walden cannot get off the block to make the tackle. So th that extra lineman they bring in does so many things. It's a run game, takes pressure off the pass. If it, if it is a drop back. Second and one, and that is Washington puts them over 100. The Raider team over 100, that is, on the ground, and they have not allowed a sack. So that's a testament again, all this rushing and pass protection to that offensive line. Yeah, it's, it's, it's awesome. And you know what? you got three running backs who are highly motivated. Why? Because the other ones are doing well, so you got to get your shots. you got to get it done. And the Raiders, their offense, six in the league, six in the rush, Sixth in passing and third in scoring. I mean, that's about as consistent in all-around offense as you'll ever find in the NFL. You know, they're running the football with the same kind of success they had last week in the win down at San Diego. Yeah, the difference, you know, today in San Diego, they moved the ball, did a lot of good stuff, but they had turnovers going in to score twice mm -hmm. in the red zone in the red zone a rarity for them they've gone some 20 games without committing one they gave two away last week but still one first and ten Monte Davis nicked on that last play so that secondary a little thinner and wide open in that secondary is Andre Holmes for 22 this it took Derek Carr drops back watch him look to his left Andre Holmes goes down and gets the chance to do a Triple shake against Milton that time, and very tough, but I know we're seeing it a lot, but I'm going to keep on talking about it. The protection, offensive line. So many, there's about six or seven good offensive lines in the NFL this year, and all those teams are big, big playoff threats to go to the Super Bowl. The rookie. Look at him go! 
Washington ah. for the touchdown. His first NFL touchdown from 22 yards out. Well, similarly, the left guard does a good job, gets David Perry to go outside. Watch the left guard against number 54, push him out. Rodney Hudson down the field, the center. And once again, pretty good block by Seth Roberts, mm. wide receiver. But it's the speed and the quickness here in the gym. Mm -hmm. That was really something to behold. Richard and Washington, man. Washington, rookie from Texas Tech. He does it all. Extra point is good. DeAndre Washington says, let's dance. Let's get a touchdown dance for the first time. Here's on a run here, 19 unanswered. And 10 minutes of playing time. And look at those two on the bench. Washington and Richard both stepping up, playing big roles here today. They're having an early Christmas party. That's Todman, and the ball squirted out for a moment. I believe he was on the ground, but had to make a tough shoulder catch. Corey James was in on the hit. Officials still not giving us a signal. Time when Jones has the yeah, football. Yeah, the Phillies, the runner was down by contact. Well, that's a good call. What I could see live looked like he was down by contact. There's the hit. Definitely has the football in his grabs. Oh, yeah. the ground, no question. No question at all. Del Rio decided to pull that red flag and put it back in the pocket. That's score. And Riley and company hold them to three this time. Well, situation like this, the Thursday night football there, but when you see a situation like this, the Raiders, the emotion, they're rolling. You've got to give the quarterback, you got to have a couple of plays up your sleeve. They get some first down to get momentum, and the crowd noise out of it. And that's Corey. Lost the football, and that is definitely a recovery by Carey of the Raiders. Malcolm Smith was the one who reached in and knocked it out of the hands of Frank Gore. He never saw Malcolm Smith. Oh, man, what a right-hand punch that is. Oh, that would, Ken Norton would love that. Yeah, he sure would. Probably taught him, you know. He's an ex-linebacker. Of course, we know his father was a great prize fighter. Punched the football, and Frank and Gore never saw him. It was Malcolm, too late. Malcolm Smith was Super Bowl 48 MVP for the Seattle Seahawks in their blowout win over Denver, and he forced that takeaway. Recovered by T.J. Carey, and the Raiders take over at the 38. His speed is a big part of that defense, Malcolm Smith. Low snap, Carr feels it, wants to run with it. And it's Walden jumping on him from behind, but not until he picked up another seven. Hunted premieres January 22nd on CBS. 18 people will go on the run from a team of expert hunters. CBS presents this real-life thriller, Hunted, beginning Sunday, January 22nd, after the AFC Championship game, only CBS. Murray, watching all the backup backs put together good runs, and he gets a nice one there of his own for eight and a first down. Let's go down to Tracy. 
Jim, cornerback Vontae Davis, who left that last drive early, is back out there. They were looking at his shoulder. He is okay, but cornerback Darius Butler remains in the locker room. He suffered an injury in the second quarter. It's the concussion protocol. He is questionable to return. Butler suffering that concussion when he was trying to make a tackle on a run by Richard in the first half. First down, give Washington. He's got another one on the way to the end zone. Back-to-back -back possessions end with Washington scoring touchdowns. Another 22-yarder, same as the one before. Holmes gets the block on Green that does the touchdown. Watch you come inside here. Gets the block, seals it. Alexander seals the outside, Holmes to the inside. And look how, man, how you draw it up. Well, that's a good-looking running back right there. Taken in the fifth round. DeAndre Washington through the first 14 games of the season. You know, he saw action. His best performance was a 57-yard running performance early in the season. He has topped that now, and he has his first two career touchdowns. They come two minutes and eight seconds apart. This one after Malcolm Smith forced the fumble. Washington starting to get comfortable, taking it the distance. Five straight possessions, resulting in touchdowns. And that's four touchdowns in less than a quarter of action. 12 minutes and 10 seconds, 26 points. Playmakers, man, they got it. Going to be a touchback. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Southwest. Yes to low fares with nothing to hide. And that's transparency. The Home Depot. More saving, more doing. Mobile Strike. Download and play now. Free from the App Store. And by Ram Trucks. America's longest lasting pickups. This is everything that Andrew Luck did not want to see. Fall behind like this and get in obvious passing situations. Again, pressure is somehow able to get it out of his hands. Is that Khalil Mack? I thought he was going to take it out of his hand. Caught by Moncrief, who got decked by a couple of Raiders. And again, the Colts, season in the balance here. They're eliminated if they lose. They need to win their last two, and they need Houston to lose to Cincinnati tonight, and then Tennessee in a game that's going to be played in Nashville next week. They need the Titans to beat the Texans. That's four things that have to happen. But they're they, down huge here, down 26. They need to find a way to make a first down or two first. Second and four. There's one. To Wayne Allen, who has been kept in check. That's his first catch. He goes for 10. This is a Indianapolis team that had has been one of the best road teams in the league this year, including four consecutive road wins coming into this one. Yeah, pretty amazing. Chuck Magano talked about it. He just felt maybe when they go on the road, they, they galvanize, pull together, they get it done. Dump it off to Gore. This piece of running here. All right, through a lot of traffic, he picks up 12. Now, they've scored 20 points in every road game, at least 20. And they've averaged 30 points a game away from home. Kind of numbers that are pretty much unheard of. Of course, there's some games like everybody else that you'd love to get back. Some of the games that got away from you at home. What the NFL's about. When in the last five minutes, those games determine if you go to the playoffs or you get fired sometimes. Nothing's going to happen like that in Indianapolis. I'm not saying that by no means. But... Like Chuck Pagano said to us in Green Bay, you've already mentioned it. Last five minutes of the first half, whatever, all that, and especially the last five minutes of games. So many games in the NFL decided in those times. T.Y. Hilton with one target. It was a catch for 12 yards. That's it. Pro Bowl wide out. Here comes Irvin after luck. He got it away in time. And there he is. It's Hilton. 
Hilton able to get behind the secondary, behind T.J. Carey, and pick up 39. Well, first off, how did Andrew Luck get the pass off? Watch to the top of your screen, and Bruce Irvin is just coming, and he jumps in the air, Luck, to throw the football a little out and up from the slot. Seen that a couple times today from the Colts. What a throw, what a job by Andrew Luck. Set up at the five, the give, Turbin. Turbin trying to find something. And through a tiny opening, he picks up two. And Jim, that play to T.Y. Hilton, you know, that is what this team does. And they like to do it a lot. But today, we haven't seen many of those shots because, you, you, like I said, you've got to respect this pass rush. And Andrew Luck, one of the few quarterbacks, could have stood in there that time and made that throw with Bruce Irvin all over him. Second and goal with five wide. There was contact, but incidental, they say. Doyle says, what was that? That was Malcolm Smith who bumped him. Well, I think what you could say is Malcolm Smith has every right to the football, too. Doyle, 84, going outside. Oh, he does bump him, so. He wasn't making a play on the football. No, he was not. He made a play on the football after it was over. Third and goal. Colts heading right into the loudest, most raucous part of this building. Buck's got an open target and a touchdown. That's Robert Turbin. Well, he comes out of the backfield, and this is what makes Jack Del Real furious Ken Norton jr. the D coordinator nobody covers turban well, once again look who's back there the two guys urban and Mac but they double team T.Y. Hilton and nobody has turban out of the backfield and those are mistakes that you see every once in a while from this Raider defense and that's what concerns them you know as we get down here near the end of the year going to the playoffs Norton sees his defense give up five completions on that drive to five different players. Extra point is good. Some urgency shown by the Colts. 75 yards and eight plays to get on the board with Turbin catching Lux. Second touchdown pass of this game. Now, we were here over Thanksgiving weekend when the Raiders hosted Carolina, and, and the Raiders jumped in front 24-7 to yes. in that one, and then all of a sudden Carolina got right back into that game before the Raiders pulled it off yeah. in the end. Yeah, Jack Del Rio talked about that to us the other day, just saying, hey, in the NFL, you know, you got to finish, and what Bob said him about that game, and we just saw in that touchdown, mistakes. You know, who's got it? Mm. Simple things. Cover the guy that you're supposed to cover. You can't blow assignments and give up easy touchdowns or easy plays in this league. That was the game in which Derek Carr yep. dislocated his pinky in two places. And he described it to us this week as his, his pinky looked like a curly fry. Yes. And Crabtree juggled it and then grabbed it on the second attempt for a first down. Well, part of the story, we keep talking about Derek Carr, but how about the run blocking? Well, similarly, and Roberts down the field. Washington goes in for the score. And then now look at Holmes. Man, what a block inside as Washington goes in. So everybody is in this on the offensive side. Do your job. And back to that pinky for Carr. When we met with him, he was excited to say that there is not going to be any need for surgery in the offseason. Yeah, that would excite me too, no, I don't get surgery, but it's, it's an interesting thing, real quick, just talking about Carr. If they can get in position and do what they're doing now and get a week off, that would give that pinky finger time to heal more and maybe get him back under center. Now, look, they're doing pretty good here today with only being under center a few times, but I know Bill Musgrave, Jack Del Rio, they want him to run the offense from under the center for all the deception you can create when your quarterback does that. 
Hitting on 68%. With three touchdowns, no picks. That last carry by Murray picked up four. And he's the target here. With defenders waiting for him. Well, he throws down Mike Adams. Maybe got a yard. You were here to see it. We were here. The car dislocated that finger. It's the most pain he's ever been in in his life. Now, pretty amazing that that happened, and it wasn't to the point where, you know, he had to sit out some games, and, you know, now you see he doesn't even wear a glove on that hand, which he did in that game once he heard it. Still threw the ball very well against Carolina. Third and five, and it's Washington. Ripping off another good run behind Osimile for 11. Well, they got you. Okay, you, they can't get to the quarterback. It's third and five. You're thinking pass, so you try hard to get there. And then all of a sudden, here comes Washington just flying by you. He made a run in practice the other day. I heard a couple of the coaches go, he's pretty good. He's showing that today, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, you can see the speed, the quickness, just the everything you want in the NFL running back all around. Seven carries for 80 and two touchdowns. And broken up, trying to go to Cooper. We've got an update. J.B. and Bart have the story. Jim, as you know, the Bucks are chasing the Falcons in the South. Yes, and Jaquez Rodgers keeps that dream alive, taking it in for the three-yard score to cut the lead. New Orleans up 20-14. That's to have any chance at the postseason, postseason, that is. Back to Jim Nance. Okay, so the Saints and the Bucks and the tight one down in New Orleans where the Raiders won week one when they went for that two-point conversion. The throw from Carr to Crabtree set the pace for the season and the whole attitude. Second and ten. And that's Washington again, that time for four. And there are the standings in that uh, NFC South. Tampa Bay needs to win that game, and uh, they need some help as well. Carolina and New Orleans actually eliminated by the result of the 1 o'clock games Eastern time earlier today. So the defending NFC champs are out of the postseason. It's been pretty much expected after that rough start to the season. Now it's official. Third and six. Crabtree makes the catch in front of Davis for the first. Man. Oh, he comes up a little gimpy. He got tackled from behind. Looks like his ankle maybe. I'm not sure. But top of your screen, watch the quick move. It's one of those jump cuts again where they just kind of stutter, jump, and then take off. And he catches this with one thing in mind, to break this tackle and go. Well, you see that Davis landed on it. And that's the fourth third down conversion catch by Crabtree in this game. Seven for 90 overall. So much at their disposal when you talk about this offense. You set it down. And there's Cooper. Between two defenders down to the 23. Stepped right in front of Melvin. I mean, and he's got another 15. Yeah, let's load it up. Oh, he's not there. Reload again. He wants to throw it to Seth Roberts. He's covered. Takes his time. Nobody around him. Then throws the... Throws the ball to Cooper for another nice game. 25 first downs in this game for Oakland. You try to guess what they're doing for a living, you go broke. Well, they're in the lead. You think, oh, they're going to run the ball. They're going to protect it, run the clock. And right here, nope, there's a whistle first. A little movement. Or at least I would go broke. You're a better <laughs> prognostic. False start offense, number 88. Five-yard penalty, it's first down. By the way, next Sunday, where will everyone be? And what will the game be that will be our national game at 425? This is just a look at the schedule, and the league always makes a five- or six-day call on this one. We'll have a doubleheader for you. Regardless, NFL Today, presented by Southwest, gets us started, noon Eastern time. I, I, you didn't make a comment about the prognostication. Well, when you're right, you're right. I don't need to. Oh, oh it just it's, it speaks <laughs> right. for itself? Exactly. Okay, well then say, yeah, hey, it's what it is. You wear the crown proudly. Richard. And 
Another flag thrown in. When you come into a weekend like this, just looking at the schedule of games, and you start to figure out what game's going to be meaningful, you know, come week 17. Holding offense, number 88. 10-yard penalty. Repeat first down. Some of these games, uh, by, by these results already, have uh, taken on added importance, but in more cases, we've had games that have made Week 17 a little less critical. Yes, yes. Some of the games. Yeah, no question. I mean, I really thought, you kind of thought that Houston and Tennessee would be playing for the championship. Still could Down be. In Tennessee, still could, that's right. But if Houston wins tonight, Houston would win the division. It would take the AFC South. We've closed out quarter number three here with the Raiders leading at 33 to 14. And you're watching the NFL on CBS. There you see the score by quarters. And Oakland so far has not given the football away once. They've not allowed a sack. And the Raiders 411 total yards. And this drive's already run for more than five minutes. They've got a first and 25 as we start the fourth quarter. Jim Nance Wilson, Tracy Wilson. Inside here in Oakland, Nance is shard. Couples, he keeps spinning around. Well, you got a team that can't pressure the passer against maybe the best pass protecting offensive line in the NFL in the Oakland Raiders. So you knew that was going to be a problem today, getting pressure on Derek Carr. Because if you gamble, then you got to deal with all the people he can throw the football to one on one. Well, Richard now a little nicked. Yeah, Morrison gave him a good whack inside. Rod Martin, a long, well respected. Team trainer. Moorhead State University. Goes to work on him right away. Used to tape my ankles when I was a freshman and sophomore, and they got too big and left, but that's <laughs> another story. Washington returns to the back here. Pass up ahead. For a nice quick gain of eight. JB and Bart. It's update time in New York. Seattle aiming for a first round bye. And Russell Wilson's aiming for Jermaine Curse, who he finds in the corner of the end zone for the two yard score, cutting Arizona lead to 14 10. All right, I know Jim Nance has all the scenarios internalized. Back to Jim Nance. <laughs> it's tough to keep up with, JB. Thank you for that vote of confidence. But Seattle off to a terrible start in that game, down 14. And now score 10 unanswered. And the Seahawks, well, they need to win. They are trying to. They lose. Atlanta could win next week and take the number two, two spot. Seat. That's the thing. Yes. Third and 15. And that is thrown away. Wow. Seth Roberts looked like he may have just stopped the route. Well, and I don't know. I, I believe it's Seth Roberts just by the emotions that you see Derek Carr having here as he walks off the field. Got a flag, by the way, in the offensive backfield. Intentional grounding offense. Number four, there was Ooh. no receiver in the area. Wow. He ran the wrong route. I mean, well, what happened? Does hear. not play into Tracy account an intentional grounding if there is no receiver in the area, as there so was. You heard it's Carter's intentional appeal. grounding. The spot of the foul and a loss of down. Saves the wrong route. Down. And then, and then Hockley actually answers back and says that doesn't factor in. He's right. It doesn't matter. Here it is. Here comes the end cut where the football goes, way down the field. And so Ed Hockley, hey, look, he, he's not going to read the mind of the receiver and the quarterback. He's just going by the rules. So they have to throw the flag. I'll tell you what that flag does versus loss of down. But with the step off, too, it takes the Raiders out of field goal range. So they brought out Marquette King. <laughs> well, we know who's, who made the mistake now. Yes, exactly. <laughs> right. <laughs> he ran the wrong route. He was called out <laughs> with a microphone nearby. Oh. Oh, man. Time's the truth. He's got to tell the truth. <laughs> See where this flies to. He's got a player down. Oh, well done. The Raiders are down there, and then a Colt player, for some reason, tried to get in there. Well, he get his pick, hands on it. He could pick it up freely. The and Colt. He, he's got it anyway. Holmes was the one though made the great play here, Phil. Watch Very this. good. Having a good day, the receivers catching, blocking, and that play on special teams. It's been such a roller coaster season for Chuck Pagano's Colts. 
Following a win, they only won one other time. And so it's been real, really trading out wins and losses most of the time. That one time they won following a win came after a bye. So they never had consecutive weeks with wins. But he did relish the fact that and appreciate the fact that his team's always responded in so many adverse situations as luck gets rid of it. Oh, Ken Irvin this time applying the pressure. They had Irvin double teamed and he still got around. They're trying to chip him and block him. Watch him come number. Well, they just, nope, it wasn't a double team. Jonathan Harrison gets caught. Watch uh, Andrew Luck's head here. Remember, he had to sit out a game yeah. because of a concussion over uh, Thanksgiving weekend. Just a good move. That's, a, that's what's hurt the Colts offensive line today. The moves inside by Mack and Urban. Second and ten to Turban. Two Raiders are there. He splits them. He's got a gain of eight. If you thought your fantasy season was over, it's not. You can sign up free. You can win a trip to next year's Super Bowl. Join today at NFL.com slash playoff challenge. Third down. Need to get to the 12 for a first. Make that the 14 for a first. And luck. That's off the ground. He had a couple of open receivers. That was Carey who tried to scoop it. Well, it's T.Y. Hilton. They put him over by the tight ends. He's wide open, but he slips. You can see Dorsett also was roaming free underneath. Yep, yep. and it's they had what they want. Little uh, Dorsett yep. and them cleaned away the for him. He's wide open, and a couple of players have slipped here late in the game, especially down that end zone area. Just the second punt for McAfee. Chance here to show off your leg. Lost the football. The football fumbled. But a flag down. That contact might have been too quick. It was close. He did hit him, I think, before the ball got there. Yes, he did. The 47-yard punt. It was Carey who tried to field it. Milton was on top of him. You know, the 33 to 14 lead, I'd almost tell my returner, you fair catch it, I don't care if there's nobody out there. Interference with the opportunity by the kicking team, number 40. That's 15 yards from the spot of the foul. Oakland's ball, first down. Christopher Milton never gave Carey any breathing. In fact, there was contact before the ball got there. This is Derek Carr, and on behalf of our team, I'd like to wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. We mentioned that the Carr family celebrated with uh, all the brothers, the parents, the in-laws last night. His brother, Darren, is the head football coach at Bakersfield Christian, where David is the offensive coordinator and his dad is the quarterback coach made it all the way to the state championship game this year that's pretty good stuff of course with that group of coaches i expect them to do well too so and i respect their quarterback and they yeah. throw it a lot yeah that's murray you may have noticed that crabtree over on the sideline taking the shoulder pads off so remember he got rolled up on that little slant pattern and picked up a first down so his day appears to be finished and Tracy let's get the report from you it looks that way Jim Michael Crabtree just on the sideline it was that right ankle but no report officially from the Raiders I was told that he doesn't let any athletic trainers ever look at him but he does not have a helmet he's got his hat on also of note Jalen Richard on the bench Cooper with a flag out and we saw Richard get dinged as well so blocked by Seth Roberts on the screen outside 
Or it could be Holmes, yes, 18. So far away, 18 and 10 look the same. Well, the question is, that was definitely near the line of scrimmage. Well, the block, it was a block made before the catch was made. There were two fouls by the offense on the play. There was a personal foul crack back by number 10. That penalty is declined. There is also a holding by the offense, number 18. That penalty will be enforced from the previous spot. Repeat second down. By the way, tomorrow, a holiday gift from 60 Minutes. A front row seat to the Broadway hit Hamilton. That's tomorrow, only CBS. You know, it's pretty good, or pretty, when you just saw that play by the Raiders, you got to lead, you want to throw the ball to call safe plays where really nothing go wrong as far as the turnover aspect of it. Officials step it off all the way back to the Raiders side of the field to the 48. So they actually, it looks like they've made it a spot foul. So the second and 22. 93. 93. In trouble. And for just the 16th time this year, car is taken down. Uh-oh, hold on a minute. What? Car signaling to the sideline. Well, it's amazing. Trent Cole fell to the ground, got back up, oh and boy. made the sack. Oh, boy. All that's immaterial material right now. His car appears to be in pain again. Yep. I saw it. Didn't he grab his hamstring? Yes, he did. Mm. Oh, boy. Boy, this is hard to believe. The entire AFC playoff picture just took a strange turn here as the Raiders quarterback is helped to the sideline. Carr with an apparent lower leg injury on his right side. Well, watch his right foot get stuck in the ground, twists. He lets go of the football. Oh, that foot is planted and gets twisted around. Mm. Davis checking it out. Oh boy. Matt McGloin has come in at quarterback. In the face of Mark Davis, Jack Del Rio walking on the field, set it off. Mm -hmm. And off to Washington since this day is crazy day with a flag out to think Marcus Mariota goes out with what looks uh, well and confirmed later on it's a broken bone situation you know, well you know then this just you, you never know young guys this it, 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 so we're hoping yeah. it's young, not yeah. as severe after the play was over a personal foul unnecessary roughness offense number 71 15 yard penalty of the dead ball spot and it's fourth down. Hold on, Watson. And again, here's the injury. It's the right foot. The good thing is, if whatever for his hope, his foot did release. It finally got out of the ground. You know, his heel wasn't in. So that's why you're hoping it's not going to be as severe as it looks. And boy, he immediately reached down and grabbed it. What did you think of him passing in that situation? You're up 19 well, the, with 11 minutes to go in the game. Yeah. And you're throw, trying to throw the football. Yeah, but you can't, you know, that's just part of it. And, and fi hey, he had all time to throw, a lot of time. The protection was great. It just took so long, and he kept trying to buy time. But, you know, 11 minutes to go up 19, it's not just like O'Neal on the ball time. So, you just got to keep playing. Fourth and 36. Kings punt. That was to the 21. This is Rodgers breaking a tackle. Nice shot, cuz. 
In fact, that could be the first time Carr was hit all day. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Fruit of the Loom. Keep your cool and breathable underwear. Nationwide. Nationwide is on your side. Honda, hurry in for great deals during happy Honda days. And by Straight Talk Wireless. Best phones, best networks, half the cost. Well, other than some music being pumped into the building here, this place has fallen silent. Had a great concern to their quarterback. They chanted MVP when he's being helped to the field. They chanted it several times today, but appeared to be a very, very nasty injury to Derek Carr. Here's Love throwing it over to Allen for a gain of 11. Whoop, there's, whoa, watch out, another injury almost. So here's how it happened. That's Trent Cole landing on him. Right foot squeezed underneath. And he's trying to signal to the sideline. Mm. And that's a catch made by, well, Dorsett. You know, now the defense, they got to regroup. You know, you look at the score and the way we know the Colts, and we've seen them all year long, they... They hang in there, and it's a 19-point lead. Still nine minutes, over nine and a half minutes to go. The Colts have all three timeouts. Second and two. And there's T.Y. Hilton. And he's touched at the 34. And he says, this is too easy here right now. And you know, there's so much of it has to do with emotions, momentum, and mm -hmm. all those things. Doyle, and he tumbles for another 10. Tracy's been down there getting a close-up look at all the things happening on the sideline. What are you hearing, Tracy? Well, I watched him walk off, and he just continuously shook his head when everyone asked him if he was okay. They took him right to the trainer's table, and they cut off his shoe, and right now it looks as though they're going to put an air cast on that foot and on that leg, and then hopefully take him into the locker room and there is an x-ray room on site here which and now they're bringing out the court right now as well to mm. take him inside Jim Okay. Latham he's coming to the sideline too Nick Yeah, it's really careful. I mean, just the tenderness you can see, just the little movements hurting him, so. And what a great day he was having for the team himself, everything, a year. Cruising along again today with three touchdowns. Yep. In full control of this game. And now the Colts. Oh, the flag out, Rodgers catch. Colts will try to put together a furious rally here as the emotion has definitely left the Raider team. Illegal formation offense number 80 is not lined up in the line of scrimmage. Five yard penalty from the previous spot. Repeat first down. First and 15, Indianapolis. As Luck gets it to Allen. As Tracy reported, in for x-rays. We can come back negative. And again, this Raiders team, if it wins here today and Kansas City loses tomorrow, would win the division, would have a first round bye, and would not have to play again until the divisional round. Here's the second and four. Three weeks. Hot 
down. But a flag is out on Sean Smith. The last thing about Deer Cole. Pass interference, defense, number 21. The ball is placed at the spot of the foul. First down. Tough kid. We saw it here in person when he had that pinky dislocated in a couple of places, and he dealt with the pain and came back after just missing a series. Yes, yes. And, uh, you know, not only that, just the, the, the he's here, to, the, his family's here today, had a great day. Think how joyous it is, and then it ends in such speculation. So, you, you know, you feel for them. You feel for all the players when they get hurt, the families. They have to speculate what's it mean. How badly hurt are they? First and ten, and luck. Tucked it under, he's about to get hit, and he takes it home. Touchdown, Colts. Well, we got a game now. Yes, we do, a half a quarter to go. It took a long time. Andrew Luck has been really good at moving around the pocket this year, and both pass rushers, Khalil Mack and Bruce Irvin, they go up the field. Looked like Stands Irvin up. had him here, Phil. Pushes him up the yep. field. Watch Irvin watching him gallop to the end zone. Oh, he knows. Well, now they're going to go for two. Got to have some containment going for two to try to make it a touchdown and a field goal with a two-point conversion if they can get this, get it down to 11. The coach will go for two. Try to bring it to an 11-point deficit. Clark zeroes in on his target, and he's got him. It's Hilton, and this game is now 33-22. What a good job. Fake the fade, came back in a little outcut, right on target by Andrew Luck. Two and a half minutes to cover the 68 yards. Luck running it in. He's thrown for two, run for one. And the Colts set up the kick now. A little bit deep. Right over the head of Tywan Jones. Bring out McGloin to the 25. Early headlines. Patriots rolled past the Jets. Blew him out 41 to 3. Miami storybook season continues. Andrew Franks from Carmel by the Sea, California. The fairy tale ending. 55 yarder to send it over time, then the winner in OT. And the Browns, that's right, they won. They're not going winless. They defeat the San Diego Chargers. All's happy in the dog pound today. Let's look at the AFC playoff picture. Now, give to Murray, and let's set up here McGloin a little bit. We've seen him before, and he's looked good when he's had the chance to play. Fourth-year player out of Penn State. It started a game down on Thanksgiving Day down in Dallas. We yep. were there to see it. He played he well. Played well. He's really done a good job. I, I know Bill Musgrave likes him as the backup quarterback. He's, you know, what's the word for him? He just, it, it's, it's right. He's just got a lot of grit. There's a toughness to him. Nobody thought he was going to make it in this league. Played for Bill O'Brien the first year at Penn State. Well, this is the spot. What do you do? When do you let him throw? Because talked about the time and the way the Colts moved the ball the last time. Go! Snapped that what ball up? with very little time left on the clock. Second and nine. It's Murray. And that's Green who's on him quickly. Holds him to three. Third down coming up. And after the game, time permitting, the Subway post-game show with JB and the crew. Scores and highlights, the Subway post-game show. Well, I would think whatever they do here, they're putting in their passing formation, the receivers, along with Michael Rivera, that it has to be a safe pass, a screen, something of that nature. Irvin and Max saying they're, they're starting to get ready for this next series, I oh, guess. Oh, man. And, they, and Irvin. They've been ready. They are ready. <laughs> yes. 
Some message he's delivering. And they know that Andrew Luck is ready to get the football back. The point slip for a moment, throws it on third down and completes it. What a throw. Oh, that's huge. Pick up of a first down I to mean, Holmes. Really, I mean, you couldn't ask it. This would be the last play you'd want to see a quarterback have to make. He almost slips and falls, gets his feet under him. It's an out cut. Boy, that's a beautiful route by Holmes. Right on the sideline, he puts it right on the money. And, and you know, I've watched Matt McGloin practice many times, watch him warm up, and, you know, he came out here and won a job with the Raiders when they had a draft pick that they picked that year. Fourth round of the Mountain Sock and Allen, I think that's not the right thing. Well, he was undrafted. He was undrafted, McGoin, yes. And he beat him out. Challenge flag has been thrown from oh, the Colts sideline. Did he bobble the football before he went out? Indianapolis is challenging the ruling in the field that the pass was complete. You take it to the ground. Did bobble it for a second, but once he regained control, were both of those feet on the ground. Oh, his poor Crabtree gets hit again. Crabtree already been knocked out of this game. Now he's got it. Now. Oh, yep, the right foot, you see it kick up a little dirt. I think this play will stand. Good challenge by Chuck Pagano, though. Now watch Crabtree here, Phil. All right, number 15. Mm -hmm. Been knocked out of this game with an injury, and have to take another hit. Yeah. It has been, as far as the injuries go, it has been a tough one for Coach Dak, Jack Del Rio, Richard. Who knows the extent of what happened with him? Crabtree. He's uh, out for the rest of the game, and of course, everyone waiting for word on the severity of Derek Carr's injury suffered here in the fourth quarter. That is three big time injuries. They're all big time, but you're talking about three playmakers. The ruling of the field stands. The pass was complete, resulting in a first down. Indianapolis is charged with their first time out of the half. Yep, so they're down to two timeouts. And again, the Subway postgame show comes up right after this game. Time permitting. Well, that was a big first down. Now, I'm not going to jump out of this booth, but they're going to run the football here in this play. Mm -hmm. If I'm wrong, that's what I meant to say. And that one play, you know, prevented the Colts from getting the football back and because of the challenge, it cost them yep. a timeout. Timeout. Field position more, time off the clock. It was a big throw and catch. Hey, go. Buddy, buddy. Murray for four. And Tracy, you got an update for us. Just a few moments ago, Jim, Derek Carr arrived at the X-ray room. His family was headed up to see him as well. As you mentioned earlier in the game, they are all here to watch him today. And he headed into the locker room. We are expected to get a report from the Raiders shortly, Jim. Okay. Thank you for that, Tracy. Backstage here at the Coliseum and ready to deliver the news as soon as, as, soon as it's released. Hey, low, Second and six. Low, low. Let me down. Times for two, maybe three. And the Raiders already guaranteed as of last week the postseason. But they're trying to win the West and a first round bye. They can do that by winning the last two games or win one game and have Kansas City lose a game. For the overall number one seed, they need to close out this one win next week at Denver, and then have New England lose at Miami. Which, let's see, last year New England went down there, could have kept the number one seed and lost to Miami. How big did that end up being in the oh. end? Ended up being the AFC Championship game at Denver instead of at New England. Oh. 
sequence of the hands of Holmes on third and four. And the Colts will get the football back here at the four-minute mark. Just a reminder that the action continues tonight on NFL Network. Cincinnati at Houston, Texas trying to clinch the AFC South. will do so with a win. Ravens and Steelers tomorrow on NFL Network. And Broncos and Chiefs on NBC on Christmas Day and evening action. Pressure getting there late. Will bounce. Will make it to the end zone. Oh my goodness! It's a touchback. Yep, it hit that white line. Man, he threw that in there. It almost, yep. almost had the right spin on it. We just got a flag though, thrown down near the goal line. The length of a football away from. Really one of the all-time punts inside the five. Man, just li listen to the crowd right now. This 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 just gone completely. Quietest stadium silent. I've ever been in. During the punt, personal foul, face mask by the kicking team, number 18. It's a 15-yard penalty and forced from the 20-yard line because the play ended as a touchback. First down. So now the, the Colts will take the snap from the 35. They're playing for their, their playoff lives here. They've yeah. got to win to stay in the chase and have any chance at all. They made the last drive look easy. You saw Khalil Mack and Bruce Irvin on the sideline talking to each other, getting ready, and... That's the mark of a good team, especially on defense. When you're talking about pass rushers, can they close the game out? We've seen Von Miller do it many times. Can one of these guys do it here today for, for the Oakland Raiders? They did it last week on the last drive against Phillip Rivers. Well, actually, Mack, three times this year, has clinched a game with a strip sack, fumble, and recovery. Three times. Here's Luck. To Hilton, the defender fell, Kerry fell, and Hilton has that speed, and so does Kerry, who got oh. back there in a hurry. They what a used... huge gain, 39 yards. Yeah, sorry, Jim, 13 inside, he's going to fake like he's going across, he stops and goes back out. It's about the second or third time I've seen him run that play, and you got to honor the speed, so when he stops and goes back out, tough to stay with him. Able to shake off the contact. They were on him. Unbelievable. It was Bruce Irvin and Mag, the two edges. Both. It's not one. It's just who can get there first. How many quarterbacks could stand in there like that and get rid of the football? Khalil Mack once again. I mean, how many are there? Really, Roethlisberger and Luck? That'll be, that might be about Cam Newton. Yep. But it's Andrew Luck really has been tremendous this year has, has gotten so much better as a quarterback with the game managing it and knowing how to work the pocket just like we saw there 314 to go in trouble again and he's brought down by a carry he busted out of that picked up two Irvin again was in the backfield quickly it was a blitz they didn't see it to Colts Remember and TJ the Carey came free Remember, the Colts, uh, a field goal is in play here, Phil. That's right. 11 points. If it's not there, throw it away, kick the field goal. Blitz. Pass behind Hilton with no defender near him. T.Y., I don't know if it was his job, but the blitz came from his side. So they could not pick it up. Here comes the blitz. T.Y. Hilton underneath, nobody on him. Got to look a little quicker. Yeah, really, I don't know if he could have looked any quicker. It was so fast and unblocked. Andrew Luck did the right thing, just got rid of the football. Vinatieri from 42 yards out. Am 
Must have it, and he delivers it. It's a one possession game. Well, no matter what you say about the Colts, how this year ends, they're tough, just like their coach. And they've shown their resiliency during the year, all the injuries. And you can see a lot of parts that are starting to come together for this team. Eighteen unanswered by Indianapolis. Here's tonight's lineup on CBS. Special encore of the Oprah Winfrey special. First Lady Michelle Obama says farewell to the White House. And then back-to-back -back editions of 48 hours. Only CBS. Well, still, you got two timeouts, the two-minute warning. If I'm the Colts, I absolutely kick this football down in the end zone. And you know what, Jim? You got the Raiders on, on looking for the onside kick. You have a chance at minute. You kick this in the right spot. You can really pin them deep. Just gonna go ahead and pick it over the head. Even though there were ten Raiders up close. Mm. That was McAfee with the kickoff. And again, the injuries today is going to be such a big story. Broken leg suffered by Mariota. And then Derek Carr here. The injury and the severity of it, we're still waiting word as he's in for x-rays right now. Well, I know this. Here we are in this situation. 233, you put everybody up near the line of scrimmage and you play run 100%. And you make Matt McGloin on a third down maybe make another throw oh. like he did that other drive. Washington what is, what is, is the running back, the rookie. He's the leader here in the late going. Line on him right away is Zach Kerr, loss of one. Timeout. Yep, leaving the Colts with one at 2.28 to go. It's a tough spot, boy. I mean, even for the coaches, you, you think about what they have here, the situation. Now you get the backup quarterback in there. Well, how do you manage this game? And you know, with the Colts still having one timeout, you got to make them use that. That's the first thing you got to do. So if you do throw it, you got to make sure it's a completion. And you tell your quarterback if it's a short pass, if it's not there, then run with the ball. Maybe lose it doesn't matter. You make them use that timeout. In a game that was 33 to seven in the third quarter, with Washington, and he runs into Morrison after two, and the Colts now use their last timeout. And just looking down the road, not having any clue what the status will be of Derek Carr. Behind McGloin is Connor Cook, who was Connor inactive Cook. today as he's yep. been all season. He's a rookie. They took in the fourth round out of Michigan State. So you got McGloin and you got Cook on the roster. Well, Connor Cook, the sense of urgency for him skyrocketed too once he saw Derek Carr go down. I would expect the Raiders here to run the ball one more time, take it down to the two minute warning. How much trust do you put in the hands of McGloin here? You just well, it's not the one. trust; it's the, it's managing the game. Just That's, go ahead and get it down to two. Well, they look, they're gonna they got guys in the backfield, so it looks like they might throw it. And they're expecting blitz. No. Third and eight. Here's the throw. And, oh my goodness! It is yeah. caught by Cooper. He hasn't had a bigger catch this year, and he's had a lot of them. It was a really good catch, an unbelievably brave throw down the bottom of the screen. Vontae Davis is going for the interception, and Coop, Cooper takes it away. Might have just iced it right there. Two-minute warning, Colts are out of timeouts. 
watch Andrew Luck's reaction oh. on that catch by Cooper. Denying him the opportunity to get the football back. Oh, McGloin fired up. Man, I don't blame you. That was some gutsy throw. And with the kneel down, let's go to Tracy. Jim, everyone down here on the Raiders' sideline awaiting patiently for an update on Derek Carr. He remains in the locker room. He had x-rays. He is surrounded by his family. They do not expect to have an official report by the end of this game, but if I do receive something, I will pass it along immediately. Okay, Tracy, thank you for being all over it and not releasing the details of that, of those x-rays. The Colts are going to be out of the postseason for back-to-back -back years. Real quick, a lot of positives for the Colts about this game this season. So many young guys kind of improved and became part of this football team. So that's got to make them feel good. The offense, no question, they got an offense that fits Andrew Luck, and they can build upon that. And now the Raiders will be rooting for the Broncos tomorrow night because a Bronco victory would give the Raiders the division and the extra week and the bye. Right. Not only that, let me just give a little quick thing about Matt McGloin. You talked about him some. He's got the grit, some toughness. When he's played in the preseason, I know the coaches have truly have a lot of faith in him, and when he plays, if he has to play next week, which I'm pretty sure he will have to, they'll, they'll let him go and get him ready in case they need him for the playoffs. Raiders improved to 12-3. and three. There's a man that needs strong consideration for Coach of the Year. Yeah, you never hear that and to think it's been so long since they've been to the playoffs in the year they've had. Jack Del Rio, second time around, has learned a lot. He's done a great job here with the Oakland Raiders. His uh, hometown team growing up just 12 miles from this stadium in Hayward. What did he say to us? Dream come true no question. to be the Raiders coach. Older, wiser, smarter, second time around. So there's the latest AFC playoff picture. Houston tonight with a win will win the South. If it loses, sets up a showdown for the division at Tennessee next week. And again, a rare sight tomorrow. Oakland fans will be cheering for Denver over Kansas City. A lot to be determined. It's a win here of 33-25 for Oakland. 10 out on CBS. Begins with some special encore of the Oprah Winfrey special for Phil, Tracy, Jim Nance saying so long from Oakland and happy holidays. Merry Christmas, everybody.